Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. A lot of people have been trying recently to predict Bitcoin's price, but doing it in very interesting ways if you kind of want to say that. Determining Bitcoin's value and its trend is not an easy task. However, some experts and crypto traders believe that by analyzing Bitcoin's network activity, they can establish the cryptocurrencies value stock analysts and traders have been at their disposal, have at their disposal various indicators originated from financial statements, earning reports and economic analyses to determine the value of stocks. Additionally, they can also use an array of technical indicators that show the trend, momentum, volume and the volatility of a given stock. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is not a traditional asset. For example, there is no corporate profit statement to help infer its value. If Bitcoin is trending at zero, zero, it has a price high or low compared to what? So to ascertain its value, we need to have a point of reference or a relationship in a venture coinist show, which happened on the 14th of October. Travis Kling, chief investment officer at Ikigai Asset Management and Hans Hauge, those are a lot of names, not going to read all those, uh, discussed how Bitcoin network activity can help ascertain, again, the value of the cryptocurrency. Kling affirms that in the same way that there is a relationship between the price of a stock and the earnings price per stock, there is a relationship between network value and network activity. Earlier in a separate interview, Kling also said network value should be a function of network activity. Bitcoin network value is easier to ascertain. Whoever wrote this article loves the word ascertain. Bitcoin's network value is easy to ascertain. It is its market cap, and Kling explains there are several different ways to measure network activity. One of them would be total transactions, transactions per day, active wallet addresses, or hash rate. The hash rate is a miner's performance indicator. Specifically, it represents the number of SHA-256 algorithms that a computer performs per second. The growing hash rate implies that more miners are participating in the network. Here's the hash rate graph right here. Typically, what we've seen uh, previously in Bitcoin's history is that as Bitcoin's hash rate grew, it meant that more people were interested in the cryptocurrency space. And therefore, uh, there was usually some type of a correlation between Bitcoin's price and the hash rate rising, i.e. as hash rate rose, Bitcoin's price would go up. I believe this is actually 2018 right here. And we saw the hash rate rising once again in 2019 as Bitcoin's price rose. And this is why we keep getting news every now and again about Bitcoin's... um. Bitcoin's hash rate uh, breaking through new, uh, what's the word? History? Volumes. All new, all new all-time highs and stuff like that. Uh, the only really weird part thus far is that Bitcoin's hash rate has exploded from here to around here. Uh, but Bitcoin's price has not necessarily followed, i.e. if we were around here by the time Bitcoin was around ten to $20,000, we're about double that in some change, and Bitcoin's price is still floating around the $8,000 range. Everyone's trying to find a way to predict Bitcoin's price. When you listen to certain podcasts and they end up having like a stock traders or analysts on the actual podcast, it's, it's very interesting the discussions that they have because one of the main things that always comes up is uh, institutions love Bitcoin. They want more Bitcoin. However, what is the value of Bitcoin? And people within the cryptocurrency space would simply say, well, it's... It's Bitcoin's this, it's Bitcoin's volatility, it's Bitcoin's robustness, it's Bitcoin's hash rate, it's Bitcoin's network, it's the amount of people around the world using it. But for them, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. They need something uh, that is derived from it, something that comes from it, something that implies that other people around the world are using it. Because at its core, or rather at its current usage, what people are using Bitcoin for uh, simply comes down to, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to hold it. I'm going to wait till this thing is worth $100 million dollars. And then I'll start using it. But how do you, how do you, I was going to use the word ascertain. How do you find something's value when no one is using it? If people are just buying it and hoarding it, it's kind of the same thing with art. Like does art really have value if tons of people are just buying it and no one's really exhibiting it or using it? Well, anyway, whatever the case might be, the last couple of months have been a, I want to say an interesting ride as far as people trying to figure out Bitcoin's value. There've been a couple of things that I think I'll talk about at the end of this month. Uh, as far as people who have thus far this year been able to, and, and I don't even want to say the word predict, uh, figure out exactly where Bitcoin's price is going to. One of them has yet to come true. It's supposed to happen this month. It's also right here, uh, helping rather using the network activity to predict Bitcoin's price ties almost directly into 
uh, when somebody made a fear and greed index for Bitcoin, trying to figure out exactly where Bitcoin's price was going to go, pretty much determining online if people were afraid or not afraid of the cryptocurrency market and therefore trying to figure out exactly where Bitcoin's price was going to go. Tying thirdly into the same exact thing, um, apparently eToro has created a, a portfolio that goes off of the sentiment of the cryptocurrency market on Twitter. The new financial instrument is called the Thai Long Only Copy Portfolio. And as of Tuesday morning, it was live on eToro's trading platform with a minimum of a $2,000 buy-in. It's a partnership between eToro Exchange and the Thai data analysis firm who sourced their tweets. About 850 million tweets per day from social market analysts with an AI system trawling through the massive trove and multiple benchmarks to compare it against. The network calibrates an optimal crypto portfolio based on the sentiment of those tweets. Joshua Frank, CEO of the Thai, told Coindesk, at launch, the portfolio includes five different cryptos, it is, they, they, wow, okay, that's weird. They have 47% of the portfolio is in Dash, 23% is in EOS, 21% is in XRP, 5% is in IOTA, and 1.97% is in Ethereum Classic. It says it rebalances every single month. Frank's theory, there's no better Intel source for crypto market movements than Twitter. Kind of the epicenter of the crypto universe. Crypto remains an asset driven by the wisdom of the crowd. Wow, okay. There's no fundamentally there's nothing fundamentally driving the value of crypto. There we go. Uh, there's no earnings, there's no dividends, there's no revenue. That's exactly there we go. That's exactly what we were just talking about as well over here. Uh, people have been trying to figure out, and this is why we've seen an explosion. I'm sure you've all noticed. Every single just about a couple of times per week, we get news that someone is creating exchange traded product, exchange traded note, something derived from Bitcoin, new Bitcoin futures, new something so and so and so. Uh, why there's also been an explosion in the amount of corporations and companies who have started talking about um, that they're going to offer uh, dividends in Bitcoin, or you can earn 3% on your, your Bitcoin per year, or you can earn 10% in this. Uh, companies need to see, while Bitcoin may be extremely popular and may have 100 million people around the world who are owning fractions of it, uh, they need to see that there's something else coming from it that derives its value. And I, I know it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but this is why we've seen the, the permeation of traditional finance sink very deeply into the cryptocurrency space and why so many different cryptocurrency exchanges and companies and banks are trying to um, derive things from Bitcoin and its price. Without any of the normal metrics driving stock market value in crypto, investor sentiment takes a leading role in determining the value of different crypto assets, he argues. Crypto trades almost entirely on public outlook, and public outlook is forged on Twitter. Eh, I would say there's more places. I, I would even include Reddit. I, I dare say Telegram. I see so many people uh, asking me if I'm on Telegram. Not on Telegram, but I assume that there's a huge presence of crypto also there. I think, I think anything social media-y is probably a very good place to get your metrics from for uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, fascinating that, I mean... I don't know how this is going to work. Here's the actual, I want to say announcement for it. Not exactly sure how it's going to work. I assume within a year or two, we'll have proper information if these uh, metrics make any sense, if this is how people really ended up, uh, oop, there we go, figuring out how, yeah, here's the actual chart right here. Dash, EOS, XRP, IOTA, and Ethereum Classic. Kind of fascinating, one, that there's no Bitcoin, there's no Litecoin, and there's no Ethereum, but they have Ethereum Classic. Quite fascinating indeed. I'm sure at some point, some sort of metric will stick. Eventually, we're going to get to the point where Bitcoin is just large enough and high enough in price that people, I think, will simply just base its value off of the actual network usage or people buying stuff or whatever the case might be. But for now, can't really do that. And without further ado, let's move on. Uh, the Litecoin Foundation is teaming up with the San Diego International Film Festival, an event that allows people to meet veteran filmmakers as they showcase their latest work. According to the announcement, they said attendees at the 2019 San Diego International Film Festival that purchase a six-day festival pass, six days festival pass, will receive Litecoin that they can use to donate to films accepted in the 2019 festival lineup. Festival attendees can also use Litecoin to vote. 
and award their favorite films. The film or filmmaker that receives the most Litecoin donations, 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 will receive the Litecoin Foundation Award on the 19th of October. The winner will be awarded an additional $1,000 in Litecoin. Litecoin creator Charlie Lee has forged a number of high-profile partnerships to introduce Litecoin to the mainstream. It says mass adoption requires two things. Awareness in real-world use cases. The film industry checks off both of these boxes in a compelling way. So, uh, Litecoin has, and I want to say these are my opinions. It's, it's a swirl of, of, of everything. Litecoin, the last year or so, has seemingly, I don't want to say lost its way. They don't really seem to know exactly uh, what to put their money on. We had news that the people from Litecoin or the Litecoin Foundation had created cufflinks in an effort to uh, make money. I think they were limited edition cufflinks. Uh, I, we also had news that they had partnered with, I think, a racing company to put their logo on a car. They had partnered with, I think, women's boxing and then kickboxing and then some other hit people in the face sport. Uh, and now... There was news about this yesterday, like at, at nighttime, floating around uh, that Litecoin had partnered with a uh, movie studio industry, so and so and so. And it turns out that they only have, I mean, only air quotes, uh, partnered with uh, the International Film Festival in San Diego for 2019. And that people will be able to use Litecoin if they choose so to be able to vote uh, for their favorite film. It appears uh, that after that's done, there will be no more Litecoin usage at this uh, event or anything else uh, associated with it. This also popped up. I tried not to mention it. We've seen before in the past um, FUD, if you will, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, however, this keeps popping up. And what I, normally when I uh, scrounge, look through different websites for cryptocurrency news. I try to compare to see if um, news can be found in different sources, i.e. if there's just a website that's talking about this one thing, I go, okay, they may not like the coin, they may not like the project. Um, however, I've seen this posted on many different websites. A lot of other people have been talking about it as well. It says, the Litecoin Foundation barely has any money left, down from more than 1 million in income last year to 70,000 in minus this year. The 1 million income was mainly due to the donations of $830,000, but they also made about 200,000 on merchandise sales. Uh, apparently, yeah, they've been selling t-shirts and other stuff. Um, for those who are not looking at the screen, it says Litecoin Foundation is running out of money. Like, I, I've heard this for the past three or four weeks. I want to say that I'm surprised, but I'm not. Um, I own some Litecoin. I was into Litecoin many, many moons ago before people were even really paying attention to it. Um, however, they have not been able to kind of keep their footing with the rest of the cryptocurrency industry, the cryptocurrency space. Uh, Litecoin, while they may have a huge amount of movement in the on the like exchanges and stuff like that, they're just not as popular. And this, you know, this is how I feel about certain things. Litecoin doesn't seem to be as popular as EOS, as Tron, as Cardano, not as popular as Bitcoin or XRP or Ether, and even a lot of times, uh, I wouldn't even say like Zcash, Monero, and Dash cumulatively probably are. Uh, more popular than Litecoin. Uh, this year, Charlie Lee said that we would have um, private transactions on Litecoin. I think that would be a, a saving grace for the entire project simply because uh, I think people don't really care that Litecoin is a test net for Bitcoin or a, a post test net, i.e. years ago, uh, if you were testing something on uh, Bitcoin or wanted to implement something on Bitcoin, you would simply Put it on Litecoin first, see if it worked, as they are a, uh, a source code fork. And if it ran correctly on Litecoin, then therefore it would run cor correctly on Bitcoin. However, since then, as Bitcoin has become a multi-billion dollar 
uh, marketplace blockchain. It has multiple test nets of its own. And Litecoin is seemingly trying to find its own way. I don't think it's by selling t-shirts or cufflinks or by having a poster in the background as uh, people kick themselves or other people mercilessly. Uh, but we'll see. We still have a couple of months left. Whenever we do get news from Litecoin, typically something like this. Uh, partnership with voting at an exclusive movie event. Cool. Um, however, I assume if the market hasn't picked up, I think it's also kind of weird that they just haven't received donations. Like Litecoin is popular. Like not, Litecoin isn't not popular. Uh, but I just think there's so many other projects that are in front of it. That kind of makes any sense. Anyway, I, 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 it took me a while to even want to talk about Litecoin going broke. However, uh, we will see. There's been many other coins as well. For those of you who were here in 2018, about every week, there, were, there was another major coin who was just losing tons of money. I assume that we'll see by spring or summer of next year. By the time Bitcoin's reward is getting cut in half, and you know, people are talking about Bitcoin's price could rocket upwards. If Litecoin hasn't reacted by then, well, that's it. Next up, a firm part owned by Overstock's T0 is seeking regulatory approval to launch one of the first markets for publicly traded registered security tokens. The Securities and Exchange Commission on Friday released a rule change proposal that would allow Boston Securities and token exchange BSTX to create an automated equity trading platform with owner records starting on the, once again, the Ethereum blockchain. Unlike its 50% shareholders, T0, who own trading platform went live in January and handles security tokens from that are exempt from SEC regulations or registration requirements, BSTX would list only tokens that are full-fledged public securities. The SEC, oh my gosh, what they, the SEC has a 129-page rule change. Gave an inside look at how the proposed exchange might run on day one. The, the important part was around here. The exchange's listed tokens would also have to be compliant with the ERC-20 standard. With additional security measures and the protocol outlined by three different smart contracts to track ownership, white listed addresses, and compliance with regulators. Uh, T0, we had information about them last year. I put yeah overstock there we go overstock was the company the years ago was trying to trying to be like ebay and amazon didn't work out too well for them in 2018 they announced that they were going to uh, start getting into the cryptocurrency space because since 2014 i believe that overstock was collecting or rather i think bitcoin was a payment option on their website i assume they did very well i think we had indications before funny how time works out funny 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 we had information that i think every year i think overstock was maybe only air quotes making around a couple thousand Bitcoin and people were like, well, not really a success and not really making that much money. And then Bitcoin's price explodes and everyone's like, okay, they made a lot of money from this. So I guess derived from this, they created their own uh, security token market exchange. The interesting part is once again, records will be stored on Ethereum and it'll have to be compliant with ERC-20 tokens because many of these tokens, as you know, uh, our securities, I mean, just even just guessing, all the other uh, news that we had about the other ones that were built on top of Ethereum who received some type of a letter from the SEC stating, hey, you're a security. Uh, fascinating. I mean, we'll see exactly how this ends up going. It'll be interesting to see ERC-20 tokens traded on actual, I, 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 I want to say stock exchanges, but I'm air quoting it. It's not a real stock exchange, but just another exchange. Uh, it'll provide extra liquidity for coins that are going to be considered securities. However, still try to focus on decentralized coins um, as they can't once again receive a letter that they're being shut down. Important. To kind of finish things off, the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Group, recently said that despite the Bitcoin price drop, customers' interest in CME Bitcoin futures remained strong. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange Group recently tweeted that despite the Bitcoin price pullback, customer interest remained strong in quarter three of 2019. On the 9th of October, the CME Group took to Twitter to state that customer interest in CME Bitcoin features remained strong with daily open interest, or OI, of over 4,600 contracts, up 61% from quarter three of 2018 because of the strong interest of institutional investors. 
Open interest refers to the total number of outstanding derivative contracts that have not yet been settled, which rose to 4,600 contracts, up from 2,080 uh, numbers. Uh, at the same time last year, CME pointed out that this occurred despite the fact that Bitcoin has dropped almost 25% in price. It kind of echoes what we had from the, who are they? From the people from Bact, who announced that, uh, I mean, we even had the chart a couple days ago as well, where they were showing the growth rate of their futures over the last couple of weeks, despite Bitcoin's price actually uh, pulling back. I find it interesting, and I wonder exactly what the correlation or the actual deep correlation is between all of this. Uh, because in 2018 as well, we saw as Bitcoin's price was going back, it actually garnered more attention from institutions. I, I, I wonder where this kind of all leads us, especially people trading uh, Bitcoin futures. And yeah, I mean, I guess even more so the news that uh, Bact is also doing better than it previously was before. I think the institutional interest is is going to remain there. I think a lot of people who are maybe fatigued with the cryptocurrency market usually, re I mean, it's usually retail investors, normally normal everyday people who don't really, I think, think of the the future outcome of where cryptocurrencies are going to go. There, there, there's far too much money behind the scenes for me to be confused as to where Bitcoin's price is going to eventually go. But I think a lot of other people, when they see that their 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 money it's going down, it's down by 2%, down by 4% every single day. It doesn't really put a, a, a glimmer in their eyes anymore. Anyway, as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Morham Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Brady Neils, Woody and Daisy, Triple M and J, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Adobo, Milwezy Mechanic, Strange Radio Central, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Cryptopolis, Nicholas, Renault, One Piece, One Love, Damien, Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie, Rich III, Vlad Impaler, Crypto Beer, Shipmate, Paxis, Nick, Manji, Alavori, Anthony, Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitch, Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, and Bodie McBoatface. Thank you very, very much for your support at the moment, or rather, uh, quick beforehand. I hope this actually makes it into the video. Like, really, though? Um, the last couple of days, I think the last, like, four videos... The videos have been getting cut off at the end. I was trying to figure out why, and I mentioned it in the other video. I, I had over like 100 tabs opened across multiple uh, different windows. And also even more so, one of the windows had um, YouTube tabs open. It had like eight of them, and they were all like, they all had videos that were like paused on it. So apparently that was also destroying my RAM. I have almost everything closed in the background. I think I have a couple more windows open. No videos playing, nothing uh, too intensive, nothing happening. So hopefully um, the video doesn't cut off again. If it does, I'll just have to do a, 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 a one window policy as I'm making videos from now on. It worked out before. We were pretty well, uh, we were doing pretty well before. However, uh, I think I've, I've, I've gone mad with the number of, of tabs that I've had open. At the moment, the market seems to be trending down. Depending on where you look, uh, Bitcoin's price is, I want to say, sloping downward every single day. We were around a couple days ago around 8,400, give or take. And then we went to 8,300, 82. And now last night we went to around 8,133. I'm expecting, I mean, at, at this point, it, it's, it seems, I want to say fairly evident. It could just be that people are, are testing to see how low it can go. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if we broke down to around 89, I'm 89, uh, to 79 or 7,700 per Bitcoin. Um, I'm buying regardless. Uh, but a lot of the market is definitely in a, a downward slope. Even weirder is that the market's uh, sloping down while Tether is also sloping down. Uh, bad day for everyone. I'm just joking. Anyway, um, nothing else super significant, either up or down at the moment. Everything is sim similarly in the same exact. I've I've noticed, uh, and, and I and I was I was talking with a friend about this as well. I think the the amount of reading and talking that I do is actually like not affecting me, but I can tell that my speech patterns are different. Like when I, when I'm trying to say things, I'm like but blah, 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 often. I think it's just a channel. I mean, I I checked yesterday. I think I've made like 1,200 videos or something like that. Something astronomically insane. So. 
I'm certain it's having some sort of effect on me. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are. Wherever you might be, I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.